I'm Nathan Kaplan, and I'm going to be talking about my paper, Bounds for the Maximal Height of Divisors of x to the n minus 1. I'll start with some definitions. The first definition that we need is that of the nth cyclotomic polynomial. The nth cyclotomic polynomial, phi n of x, is the unique monic polynomial whose roots are precisely the primitive nth roots of unity. It is not difficult to show that these polynomials have integer coefficients and are irreducible. Once we know that these coefficients are integers, we'd like to know how large they are. We say that the height of a polynomial with integer coefficients is the maximum absolute value of one of its coefficients. Let a of n be equal to the height of the nth cyclotomic polynomial. This function a of n has been studied for over 100 years and is the subject of several recent papers. In this paper, we don't study a of n, but a variation which was recently introduced in a 2007 paper of Pomerantz and Ryan. Let b of n be equal to the maximum height of any divisor of x to the n minus 1. It is easy to see that x to the n minus 1 factors as a product of cyclotomic polynomials. Therefore, if we want to study b of n, we're not just studying heights of cyclotomic polynomials, but heights of products of cyclotomic polynomials. The paper is divided into several sections. First, we give an analog of a theorem for a of n and show that b of n can be bounded by a function which does not depend on the largest prime dividing n. We then give the best known general upper bound for b of n. Here is the theorem from that section. For the rest of the paper, we focus on b of n for particular types of n. We start with an example. Let n be equal to 15. x to the 15 minus 1 has exactly 16 divisors. Computation shows that 14 of them have height 1, one of them has height exactly 2, and one of them, 5, 3 times 5, 5, has height exactly 3. So b of 15 is equal to 3. In their original paper, Pomerantz and Ryan show that b of n is equal to 1 if and only if n is a prime power. They then show that for primes p and q, b of p times q is equal to the smaller of the two primes. So it makes sense that b of 15 is equal to 3. They also note that computational evidence suggests that b of p squared times q is equal to the minimum of p squared and q. In the next section of our paper, we prove this by considering each of the 64 divisors of x to the p squared times q minus 1. For the rest of the paper, we consider b of p times q times r for primes p less than q less than r, and it's significantly more complicated than these earlier cases. We first consider another example. Let n be equal to 3 times 5 times 29 x to the 3 times 5 times 29 minus 1 has exactly 256 divisors. Computation shows that there's one divisor which has a coefficient of negative 41, and that this is the maximum absolute value that occurs. So we see that b of 3 times 5 times 29 is equal to 41. The main theorem of the rest of the paper is to give an upper and lower bound for b of p times q times r. We can show that 1 third of 3p squared q minus p cubed plus 7p minus 6 is less than or equal to b of pqr, which is less than or equal to p squared times q squared. The lower bound is particularly interesting because it's an equality in many cases. For example, the case on the previous slide. We give this lower bound by giving a lower bound for one particular coefficient of one particular divisor of x to the pqr minus 1. At the end of the paper, we suggest some directions for further research. Thank you.